Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 7. Andre Brauer, a luminary of television drama and comedy. Andre Brauer, the Emmy-winning actor renowned for his roles in Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Homicide Life on the Street, passed away at the age of 61 after a brief illness. His departure marks the end of an era for an actor who brought depth and nuance to every character he portrayed. Born in Chicago, Brauer's journey in acting began with his education at Stanford University, followed by a Master of Fine Arts from the prestigious Juilliard School. His film debut in the Oscar-winning drama Glory, alongside esteemed actors such as Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman, set the stage for a career defined by powerful performances. Brauer initially gained recognition playing Detective Winston Blake in the Kojak TV movie revivals between 1989 to 90. However, it was his role as Detective Frank Pembleton in Homicide Life on the Street that cemented his reputation as a versatile actor. His portrayal earned him two Emmy nominations and a win in 1998, alongside two Television Critics Association Awards for Best Actor in a Drama Series. More recently, Brauer captivated audiences as the stoic Captain Raymond Holt in the hit comedy series Brooklyn Nine-Nine. His performance in the show, which ran for eight seasons, brought him four Emmy nominations and two Critics' Choice Awards for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. His ability to balance drama and comedy showcased his exceptional range as an actor. SAG-AFTRA, the Actors' Union, remembered Brauer as a dynamic performer in drama and comedy. His impact on the acting community was profound, and he will be deeply missed by peers and fans alike. Brauer is survived by his wife Amy Brabson, who notably played his character's wife on Homicide, and their three sons. His legacy in television, marked by memorable roles and critical acclaim, will endure as a testament to his extraordinary talent and dedication to his craft. Tribute to Andre Broger. Number 6. Camden Toy, a master of the macabre in Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. Camden Toy, known for his versatile and eerie performances in the cult classic TV shows Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, passed away at the age of 68 due to pancreatic cancer. Toy's death on December 11th in California marks the loss of a talented actor cherished for bringing some of the most memorable supernatural characters to life. Born into the world of acting, Toy carved a niche for himself in the horror and fantasy genre. He gained recognition for his ability to portray a range of monstrous and demonic characters, making significant contributions to the Buffy the Vampire Slayer universe. His roles included the skin-eating demon Gnarl, the formidable Ubervamp, and one of the eerily silent gentlemen in the critically acclaimed episode, Hush. Toy's skills extended to the Buffy spin-off, Angel, where he captivated audiences as the Prince of Lies. His performances were marked by a seamless blend of horror and humor, fitting perfectly into the show's mixed genre nature. Despite being frequently under heavy makeup, Toy's talent shone through, bringing a unique depth to each character he portrayed. His partner Bethany Henderson shared that Toy had been battling cancer since February 2022. In respecting his privacy, Toy chose not to disclose his illness publicly, a decision that reflects the humility and personal strength he maintained throughout his career. Camden Toy's legacy in the horror and fantasy genre remains unparalleled. His ability to infuse life into the macabre and the fantastical made him a beloved figure in the Buffy and Angel fandoms. As fans and colleagues mourn his loss, they celebrate the unique artistic contributions he made to the world of television. Tribute to Camden Toy.
Number 5. Ricardo Drew, Ahsoka Music Luminary Gone Too Soon Ricardo Drew, a renowned figure in the world of Soka music, passed away at the age of 38. The news of his untimely demise was shared through his official Instagram page leaving fans in the music community in a state of shock and grief. While the cause of his death was not disclosed, the profound impact of his loss on his family, friends and fans is palpable. Drew's sudden passing has sent ripples of sadness across the globe, a testament to his widespread popularity and the love he garnered through his music. His family and team have asked for privacy during this challenging time, as they grapple with the immense loss of a beloved artist and individual. Ricardo Drew was celebrated for his unique blend of soca, R&B, and reggae, creating a distinct sound that resonated with audiences far and wide. He was the lead vocalist of the group Crossova and enjoyed a successful solo career, marked by hits like Get Wild and Na Leaving Feet, Patrice Roberts. His talent and charisma on stage earned him opportunities to perform alongside prominent artists, including Mario, Sean Kingston, Ziggy Marley, and Jeffrey Osborne. Drew's fiance, soca singer Patrice Roberts, expressed her profound sorrow on Instagram, sharing a touching video that captured a tender moment between the couple. The outpouring of tributes and condolences from fans and fellow musicians alike underscores the void his departure has left in the music world. Ricardo Drew's legacy in the soca music scene will continue to live on through his music, influencing and inspiring future generations of artists. His contributions to the genre have not only entertained but also enriched the cultural tapestry of Caribbean music. Tribute to Ricardo Drew Number 4. Barbara Iglewski, a pioneer in microbiology and mentorship. Dr. Barbara Hotham Iglewski, a trailblazing American microbiologist and a revered academic figure, passed away at the age of 85 on December 10. Her profound contributions to microbiology and her role as a mentor and leader have left a memorable mark on the scientific community. Born on March 23, 1938, in Freeport, Pennsylvania, Iglewski's early exposure to the medical field, accompanying her father on house calls, laid the foundation for her illustrious career. She pursued her passion for biology at Allegheny College, graduating with a B.S. in 1960, and furthered her studies at Pennsylvania State University, where she earned her M.S. in 1962 and Ph.D. In 1964, Iglewski's journey as an educator began at Oregon Health and Science University School of Medicine, eventually leading her to the University of Rochester Medical Center. Here, she broke new ground as the first woman to chair the Department of Microbiology and Immunology, a position she held from 1986 to 2009. Her pioneering spirit continued as she became the first female vice provost for research and graduate education at the university. Throughout her career, Iglewski published over 150 research papers and book chapters, held seven patents, and was recognized as a highly cited researcher by the Institute for Scientific Information. Her dedication to mentoring was recognized with the Lifetime Mentoring Award from the University of Rochester's School of Medicine and Dentistry. Dr. Iglewski's legacy extends beyond her scientific achievements to the countless students and colleagues she inspired and guided. She is survived by her two sons, Eric and Bill Iglewski, and has left behind a legacy of scientific excellence and mentorship that will continue to influence and inspire future generations. Tribute to Barbara Iglewski. Number 3. Michael Blakemore, a towering figure in theater direction. Michael Blakemore, a titan of theater direction whose career spanned over six decades, passed away at the age of 95. His death on December 10th, following a short illness, leaves a significant void in the world of theater. Blakemore's remarkable journey in theater, marked by his collaborations with renowned playwrights and unforgettable productions, has left a memorable mark on both West End and Broadway. Born in Sydney, 
and educated before moving to London, Blakemore's initial foray into the arts was as an actor, graduating from Rada in 1952. His transition from acting to directing proved momentous, leading to a prolific career that saw him helm various acclaimed productions. His directorial debut at the Citizens Theatre in Glasgow set the stage for a lifetime of groundbreaking work. Blakemore's partnership with playwright Peter Nichols was particularly notable, starting with the staging of A Day in the Death of Joe Egg in 1967. This black comedy about a couple caring for their disabled daughter went from Glasgow to the West End and then Broadway, earning Nichols a Tony nomination. His work at the National Theatre, first under Laurence Olivier and then Peter Hall, further cemented his reputation, despite the challenges he faced. His frequent collaborations with Michael Frayn were celebrated, directing plays like Make and Break, Noises Off, and Copenhagen. In 2000, Blakemore achieved the rare feat of winning two Tony Awards for Best Director for Copenhagen and the musical Kiss Me Kate. His directorial prowess extended to musicals like City of Angels and The Life, and he directed Angela Lansbury in Noel Coward's Blythe Spirit in both Broadway and The West End. Michael Blakemore's legacy as a director of great insight and innovation will continue to inspire theater enthusiasts and professionals alike. Tribute to Michael Blakemore. Number two, John Brooks, Slaughter, a visionary in engineering and education. John Brooks Slaughter, a pioneering figure in the fields of engineering and academia, passed away at 89 in Pasadena. As the first black director of the National Science Foundation and the first black president of Occidental College, his extensive career was marked by groundbreaking achievements and a steadfast commitment to diversity and excellence in education. Slaughter received the inaugural U.S. Black Engineer of the Year Award in 1987, reflecting his significant contributions and influence as an engineer. He was a beacon for many in the black community, using his positions to advocate for inclusion and diversity in the sciences. During his 11-year presidency at Occidental College, Slaughter was instrumental in transforming the institution into a diverse and inclusive liberal arts school. His leadership was characterized by a belief in the synergy between quality, equality, and diversity. Under his guidance, Occidental College saw an increase in applications and the initiation of several community-building initiatives. He also led a successful fundraising campaign enhancing the college's academic programs and infrastructure. Slaughter's journey in education and engineering began in Topeka, Kansas. He graduated with degrees from Kansas State University, UCLA, and UC San Diego before joining the National Science Foundation in 1977. Apart from his roles at the University of Maryland and Occidental, Slaughter was active on various boards and committees, emphasizing higher education reform and diversity. He later became the president of the National Action Council for Minorities in Engineering and was a professor at USC until his retirement in 2022. The impact of John Brooks Slaughter's work is far-reaching, evident in the countless students and professionals he inspired. His legacy lives on in the initiatives he championed and the paths he paved for future generations. Tribute to John Brooks Slaughter Today's top headlines. News 1. Kate Micucci, the 43-year-old actor known for her role in The Big Bang Theory, is on the mend after undergoing successful lung cancer surgery. Despite never having smoked, Micucci faced this unexpected health challenge with positivity, as she revealed in a recent TikTok update from her hospital bed. The actor, also famous for her roles in Scrubs and Will and Grace, expressed gratitude towards her doctors for their early detection of the cancer. Known for her versatility, Micucci has not only made her mark in live-action TV shows, but has also been a voice behind beloved characters in animated series like Steven Universe, Milo Murphy's Law, and Scooby-Doo. 
While she recovers, Mikuchi plans to take it slow, looking forward to returning to her passion for painting. Fans of her work can also enjoy her musical talent in the comedy duo Garfunkel and Oates, where she performs alongside Ricky Lindholm. Mikuchi's spirit and resilience, as shown in her social media updates, serve as an inspiration to many. News 2. Bill Burgess, a revered Hall of Fame football coach and a guiding light in Jacksonville State sports history, has passed away at 82. His death was announced by Jacksonville State University, reflecting on his remarkable legacy. Burgess led the Gamecocks from 1985 to 1996, amassing an impressive 84-49-4 record, four Gulf South Conference championships, and the 1992 Division II national title. His tenure at JSU was marked by outstanding achievements, including the memorable 17, 13 victory over Pittsburgh State in 1992, securing the Division II National Championship. Burgess's impact extended beyond the field as he was inducted into several sports halls of fame and had JSU's home stadium renamed in his honor, remembered fondly by players, colleagues, and family, including his son, Rick Burgess, of the Rick and Bubba Show. Coach Burgess leaves behind a legacy of excellence and integrity in both his professional and personal life. News 3. Antonio Giuliano, an illustrious Italian footballer known for his artistry in midfield, passed away leaving behind a rich legacy in the world of football. Born with a natural talent for the game, Giuliano was celebrated for his exceptional leadership, technical skills, and control over the ball. His career was marked by an extraordinary vision, endurance, and an impressive range of passing. During his remarkable club career, Giuliano became a pivotal figure for Napoli, where he played from 1962 to 1978. His tenure at Napoli was adorned with significant triumphs, including winning the Coppa del Alpi in 1966, and later the Coppa Italia and the Anglo-Italian League Cup in 1976. He concluded his playing days with Bologna, helping the team stave off relegation before retiring in 1979. Giuliano also shone on the international stage, earning 18 caps for the Italy national team from 1966 to 1974. He was part of the victorious Euro 68 squad and represented Italy in three World Cup finals, notably playing in the 1970 final against News 4. Renowned cinematographer Ken Kelsch celebrated for his work on Abel Ferrara's films has passed away at 76 due to complications from COVID and pneumonia. Kelsch's distinguished career is best known for his collaboration with Ferrara, particularly on the acclaimed 1992 neo-noir Bad Lieutenant, starring Harvey Keitel. This film marked a pivotal moment in their partnership, which began with Ferrara's debut The Driller Killer in 1979. Kelsch's innovative approach to cinematography, especially his signature handheld style, was prominently featured in Bad Lieutenant. His philosophy of minimalism and naturalism in lighting and camera work shaped the visual storytelling of Ferrara's films. The duo worked together on a dozen movies, including the 1996 crime drama The Funeral with Christopher Walken and the 2011 apocalyptic drama 444 Last Day on Earth with Willem Dafoe. News 5. In a tragic turn of events, Illinois police have reported that the recent disappearance of 17-year-old Brissa Romero, who went missing on her way to a holiday work party, ended in an accidental death. Brissa's body was discovered in a pond in Vernon Hills on Tuesday, December 12th, and while formal identification is pending, authorities believe it is her. The Carpentersville resident was last seen driving a 2008 Nissan Rogue to Bolero in Vernon Hills. Her vehicle was later found submerged in a retention pond with several personal items, including her backpack, located along the shore. Police investigation suggests that Brissa accidentally drove into the pond, failing to navigate an intersection properly. The car was found 60 feet from the shore in water 20 feet deep. Surveillance video from a nearby fast food restaurant showed Brissa driving moments before the incident, with no signs of foul play according to police. Brissa was a student at Harper College, where she aspired to become a sonographer. The college expressed profound sorrow over the loss, describing it as devastating news and mourning the tragic end of a promising young life. News 6. 
Beloved Bay Area television icon Jack Hansen has passed away at the age of 91 after a long illness, leaving behind a legacy that spanned over six decades in broadcasting. A San Francisco native, Hansen's remarkable career journey began in the KPIX mailroom following his graduation from San Francisco State University and service in the U.S. Air Force. Hansen's dynamic career saw him working with several prominent stations, including KRUN, KPIX, KTVU, KKEO TV, and the Cable Health Network. He was also the host of Comcast Newsmakers, a notable news interview show on CNN Headline News, an achievement that led to his induction into the Gold Circle of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences SF Chapter. News 7. In a tragic accident, 24-year-old Jackson Williams, a graduate student and celebrated rodeo star, lost his life while duck hunting at Sooner Lake, Oklahoma. Williams met his untimely demise on Sunday morning when his waders filled with water after he unexpectedly hit a drop-off in the lake. This unfortunate incident led to him being weighed down and unable to surface. The Oklahoma game wardens, who announced the accident, later retrieved Williams's body from the lake floor using side imaging technology. Captain Ben Bickerstaff from the Oklahoma Game Wardens highlighted the challenges of handling waders and water, especially under stressful and cold conditions. Williams, a student at Oklahoma State University's Department of Plant and Soil Sciences, was remembered for his contributions both academically and in the rodeo community. He previously achieved significant success in rodeos before joining OSU, where he also served as an OSU Extension Agriculture and 4-H educator in Logan County. Number 1. Richard Gaddis, a guiding force in opera and arts administration. Richard Gaddis, a prominent English opera company administrator who made significant contributions to the opera scene in the United States, passed away at the age of 81 on December 12. His career spanned decades and continents, influencing the opera world profoundly. Born in Wallsend, England, Gaddis's early career in England was marked by innovation and talent discovery. As a student at Trinity College of Music in London, he initiated a series of lunchtime concerts at Wigmore Hall, introducing young musicians such as James Galway and Margaret Price. His early venture into artist management showcased his knack for recognizing and nurturing talent. Gaddis's journey took a pivotal turn when he moved to the United States. In 1969, he joined the Santa Fe Opera as its artistic administrator bringing his keen eye for talent to the American opera scene. He was instrumental in the U.S. debut of soprano Kirite Kanawa and introduced other notable artists like Edo de Wart and Frederica von Stade. His tenure at Opera Theatre of St. Louis included a historic presentation at the Edinburgh International Festival in 1983. Returning to the Santa Fe Opera in 1994, Gaddis played a crucial role in the company's growth and expansion. As general director from 2000 to 2008, he continued to bring prominent artists to Santa Fe and championed the performance of new and unusual works. Gaddis received numerous honors and awards, including honorary doctorates from several universities and the first national endowment for the Arts' Opera Honors Award in 2008. His dedication to the arts was celebrated with a proclamation by the governor of New Mexico, declaring September 16, 2008, as Richard Gaddis Day. Richard Gaddis' enduring legacy in the opera world as a visionary leader and mentor will continue to inspire future generations of artists and administrators. Tribute to Richard Gaddis.